In this video, I'm going to break down exactly how I made this PS1 style character inside of Blender. We're going to walk through modeling, UVs, textures, and rigging all in this video. So let's hop in right now. To start off, I added a cube and then added some vertical loop cuts. From here, you can kind of use the G to us, which is edge slide, to start rounding out the body. Then start adding some horizontal loop cuts and give it like a bean type of shape. Just think of what a human body actually looks like. And what I do for the neck, I get some sort of setup like this. I select the middle vertice and then just go control B and click V and that goes to the vertex pebble. This will create this little triangle. And then if you just go with the knife tool, just join up the two sections and you create a full neck that has enough vertices to actually screw it up. Cause obviously your neck doesn't want to have like four vertices. So we are doing PS1, so we can kind of do whatever we want. To save time, I didn't really bother with much of the lower body. Usually I kind of build the legs and then like duplicate it and then build the pants on top and all of that. But just to save time, I kind of just went straight in and kind of modeled the shape that I actually needed, which ended up making the modeling for this character a lot quicker. Basically, I just took it from the hip and extruded it out as this big, like, puffy thing, which is kind of how it showed up in my concept art. And then just kind of extruded it in and out, gave it like some nice good shape, uh, obviously following the kind of how a knee and leg looks. And then adding in some extra edge loops. I usually just add two edge loops to the knee, which basically just helps when like deforming and not having any clipping or any like kind of bad deformations. Then we can add some feet to our character. So I just extrude out the front. And if you don't extrude, like just go E and Y to extrude it out flat, you can select the bottom of the foot and go or S, Z and zero. And that will make it 100% flat. What's also quite useful is if you just select the whole foot and you go shift H. What this does is it has the rest of the model. What you can do from here is actually just work on the foot and not have to worry if you're like in top view or bottom view about having the whole rest of the character in front of you and getting selected and all of that stuff. Belts are pretty easy to make. Basically, grab a plane. Uh, you can even just go duplicate part of the kind of character if you grab kind of like the waist kind of area. Duplicate it, extrude it down, and then just go kind of shape it. So basically, I want to kind of have it hanging down a little bit. Then I just add a solidify modifier, and you're most of the way there. If you want, you can add some extra stuff like belt loops and all of that jazz. But mine ended up looking pretty good, just like this. And then obviously, he's a samurai with this like fancy little hat. So basically, all I had to do for that is just add in a circle. I can't remember exactly what resolution I did. Probably did something like 8 or 10. You can kind of choose, and it's up to you. Then you kind of just extrude it in and pull it up a little bit. And that gets you basically 90% of the way there. Then you can see they had this little spark at the top, which was, again, you just kind of extrude it up, skate it out, and extrude it back in. For the head, I basically just take a cube and subdivide it. Then I kind of just grab the little front bit and extrude it down for the jaw, and then start shaping it until I actually get something that looks like a normal head. It can be difficult sometimes. You have to just do some trial and error and just trust the process. I find that when I'm making characters like this, I just kind of start out and it doesn't look that great. But as you work on it and you add more details and you refine the shapes, you actually can end up with something pretty good. If you still can't get better, I recommend that you just get feedback from other people and see where you're going wrong. For these little plates on the side of the leg, it's actually pretty simple to do. Just take, go to the leg, grab some side pieces, just kind of like six faces like this, and then just duplicate it. Shift D and then P by selection to make it to an object. What you can do is just select the horizontal edges and then just do V to rip. And then kind of just drag it out so they're kind of all at this angle. And once you add a solidify modifier, it ends up looking like some pretty cool metal plates. And obviously, once we add all our textures, it's going to look pretty cool. And speaking of that, let's actually go on to the texture bit. If you've worked with characters 3 software before, you'll know that to add textures, we need to first UV unwrap our model. Basically, what this does is you take your mesh and you cut it up. And whatever kind of how you lay it flat is how the texture is going to be applied to your 3D model. So this is a pretty important step to get done before you actually start texturing. Because once you start texturing, it's almost impossible to change this because then you're going to like relay it out on your UV map. And then you're just going to have to repaint everything all over again. When it comes to UVs, basically, you can just do something like this. You can add in a grid and you just go in the blender. You can go new and then just add in this like square grid. And basically, what this does, is it just helps you know kind of if parts are stretching and if it's going to look super bad if you have put a seam there. As a general rule of thumb for my characters, I kind of just start splitting off different sections like the arms, the legs, the feet, like stuff like that. And then if you go to Blender, you can go to the UV editing window and then go to this little drop down, turn on UV stretch or whatever it's called. Basically what this does, it turns your UVs into this like blue yellow type thing. Basically blue is good, yellow is bad. The more yellow it is, the more stretched it is. So this is just a good rep visual representation on if your UVs are working or not. Okay, and it's kind of like it's just basically kind of boring stuff that you have to get out of the way before you can make start texturing your character. So let's actually just skip ahead. If you want to learn more about this, go find one of my other tutorials. 
or you can go bar the full course. Going into sex trick, here's where the character comes to life and we can really bring the concept into our character. So what I usually start by doing is just blocking out the colors that I need. And if you've never worked with Blender's texture painting, I recommend that you learn how to use the color palettes because obviously there's no point in having to pick your colors over and over again. Just pick a good color and then I pick a highlight and a shadow and then just start kind of painting in some sort of like gradients and some highlights and some shadows onto each of those things. Once you have these kind of base flat colors, this is when you can start going and adding all the details. And this is why I really like using someone else's concept because someone put thought into making an actually good looking character design better than what I can do. It's because we have all these extra little details that I can go paint in and really kind of make this character come to life and make it look really cool. I enjoyed the mix of all the different kind of just different painting and like using all these little highlights and all the different patterns and trying to get them to actually work within the whole PS1 style. And I'm actually safe to say it actually came out pretty well and I'm actually quite happy with it. So I ended up losing some of the textures because I forgot to save the images. I thought I had saved it locally and didn't. So I actually lost like half the upper body. So I've actually permanently lost the, the all the weapons textures, which is not fun, but it's fun. Just quick tip, if you do it, record the process so you can take a screenshot and try overlay it and try clean up clean up your textures from that. And that's basically how I recovered half my character's textures. But yeah, so if you want to download the, the model, you can't get half the textures for the weapons, but you can watch me actually do it. By the way, if you have seen this character and you are interested in learning how to make something like this, you can buy my PS1 character course and the recording for the main character and this character is included in there. And the first five people to use code PS1 guide get 20% off. So first inscription, check it out now. Back to the video. Now, the next thing we have to do is rig our character. And the rigging is just basically building some bones so we can actually go and animate our character. So what I usually do, is I usually go and start out just by adding in a rigify rig. But this time I want it to be special. So I just built it from scratch and I'm not sure, but it might have actually saved time. Basically, all you have to do is kind of just add bones where you actually need to move different parts of your body. So for like the upper body, I'll have one for the bottom, one for the middle, one for the upper. And then I'll go for like the arms. You obviously need one maybe for like the shoulders. So you can raise and lower the shoulder. And then you need one for the upper arm, one for the lower arm, one for the hand, one for like each joint of the finger. Then obviously the same thing for the thumb and so on and so on. You just need kind of the bones that you actually need to puppet your character. And then you can go add in all these extra bones if you want to control like all the different cloth and stuff. So you can even get them to like vibrate in the wind and stuff like that, which I think ends up looking really cool, especially when you put it in a game. And one of the things that also takes a lot of time and usually the reason that I use a rigify like base rig is just because you have to name each bone, which just takes a lot of time. And you just have to follow the naming convention of everything on the left side of the mesh or the rig, you have to just go give it a name and then dot L. And then what you can do is just go click symmetrize uh, under the armature tab. And this will just mirror it across, which is really nice and saves time, but you have to still have to name half your bones. Then we can go on to getting some RK rigs. And basically what this does is you can add some little bones on like the feet and the knee and the, like the ones at the foot will be the RK bones and the ones at the knee will be the pole targets. Basically what you can do is you just able to shift the weight of the character and all of this, which just makes animating so much easier. Yeah. Okay. So now you know how to make your own characters, but you might be making some huge topology mistakes that are kind of ruining your characters. So go click over here to watch a video on that right now. See you.